Right, so as Miranda explained, the best way to avoid plagiarism is to cite. And now we're going to talk about um, when to cite and how exactly uh, it should look like. Um, sorry, just a second. Okay, when should you cite uh, sources? Uh, what are the citations that you use are the specific information that you have to give me as a reader so I can know exactly where your information came from. And there are four situations that you need to cite sources in your paper. Uh, these are when you quote, when you paraphrase, when you summarize, and when you use uh, factual in information that uh, we need to look up, that is not common knowledge. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one of these situations in more detail and talk about how to cite them. Uh, we'll start by talking about how to do improper in-text citation. In-text citations mean uh, the um, indications, citations that you give inside your paper uh, in the running text. And we are going to discuss the APA 7th edition, which is the latest edition of the APA. Uh, in general, uh, citations include author's name and the year of publication. More specifically, we're going to start by the first situation where you need to cite, and that is direct quotes. Um, direct quotes are any word-for-word -word use uh, of a source. For direct quotes, the APA uh, says you need to provide the um, author's name, last name, the year of publication, and the page number. Uh, here's an example, uh, you can see it on the screen, uh, of how the citation uh, would look like. Uh, the author's name here, Hause, is included in the sentence. It's the subject of the verb claim. So I, I use it as a word and I put the year in between parentheses and I continue my sentence. Claims that approximately 70% of U.S. healthcare organizations use this social media as part of various community engagement activities, end quote. These are the exact, when between quotation are the exact words that I got from the source. I end by uh, putting the page number by marking P dot space and then the page number. Here it's 245. Another way uh, to indicate that you are directly quoting is um, by putting the whole, all the information in one parenthesis. Uh, so here you have uh, a sentence that says, research has found that approximately 70% of U.S. healthcare organizations use social media as uh, part of various community engagement activities, end the quote. And then I put house, that's the name, comma, the year, comma, p dot space and the page number, all of it in the same parentheses. So um, the difference, uh, there's no difference between uh, these two examples in terms of acceptability. You're free to choose whatever works best in your paragraph. Uh, the first type, let's re, uh, look at it again. You have the author's name is in what we call the signal phrase. It's the phrase that tells me uh, here comes a quotation. Uh, here it, the signal phrase is how is it claims that. And I enclose... Um, the quote with the page number at the end so i separate the author's name from the page number or as in the second example which is called parenthetical uh, citation i put all the information uh, separated by commas um, okay so this is normally how you uh, cite direct quotes from uh, peer-reviewed uh, uh, papers, but what if there's no page number? For example, if you're citing um, uh, citing or quoting word for word from a web page, uh, this is here we have a New York Times article, and you want to uh, cite the highlighted material, uh, and so you say, okay, you have Reynolds, that's the name of the author. 2022 that's 2020 that's when the article was published 
uh, argued that there is considerable and compelling evidence that exercise alters our risks of developing or dying from malignancies. And then what is instead of page number, I have the word para dot, that's short for paragraph. Uh, so I, what I do is I count the paragraphs. I have here three and my quoted material appears in the second paragraph. So in this way, you tell the reader where exactly to find the information that you uh, quoted. Um, also, uh, notice that uh, the author's name, uh, Gretchen Reynolds, so I use the last name, and the year should appear exactly like you cite other sources. Um, now, sometimes uh, you want to quote a long block of text. Uh, it's not advisable, but if you have to quote a long uh, block of text that is more than 40 words, the rules of the APA say that you need to use a different format, which is called block formatting or block quote. Here's an example uh, of a block quote. So instead of adding quotation marks, what you do is uh, you use, you indent the whole uh, quote and you um, mention the author's name. Here it's Herbert, uh, et al, or ally, uh, to 20, uh, 2018. So I have, this is my signal phrase here. According to Herbert et al, uh, 2018, my word for word quotation which is more than 40 words is all indented and then i end by indicating the paragraphs uh, the page number by uh, putting p dot page number here it's 266 and notice how it appears after uh, the, the full stop Now, uh, quotation is uh, uh, one situation that you need to cite to indicate where you got the information, uh, but it is the less common uh, situation. The, uh, the, the, the more common situation where we need to cite or the way to display information from other sources without plagiarism is paraphrasing. So let's look at that. Uh, paraphrasing means to present the information in your own words. Um, according to the APA, uh, when you paraphrase, you do not indicate the page number. You still indicate the author's number and the year. So here my author is Wegener and Petty, 1994, that's the year. Support the claim that webinars are boring. Um, now, it's important to note that the APA recommends uh, using paraphrasing more uh, than direct quoting. Uh, if your paper has too many uh, direct quotes, then your voice gets lost and uh, you risk uh, uh, being flagged for academic integrity. Uh, so try to avoid quotation as much as possible and paraphrase in your own words what you read in the source. Basically, what you need to do in paraphrasing is explain what the authors are saying and not just tell me what they are saying. Explain in your own words what you understand from the source. Uh, the quotes, which are word for word, you save for special occasions like when the actual uh, words of the quote are important for your paper uh, or if you're quoting a, an exact definition. Um, or you want to address what the quote actually says, the words that appear in it. Otherwise, choose paraphrasing. Remember, the format is just uh, the author's uh, family names. Here I have to end the year in between parentheses, or you can use it in parenthetical uh, citation where you include all the information inside the parentheses. We will see some of these uh, examples. So now, um, Let's, let's look at an attempt to, uh, to paraphrase because paraphrasing is a little bit tricky. So you, so you need to tell me what the author said, but in your own words. So basically without uh, sounding like you're plagiarizing. Uh, so let's look at um, 
this text it's uh, uh, appear uh, that appeared in Rulin and Lavashina, uh, 2018, on page 2022. The text says, uh, cyber vetting or hiring managers attempts to assess part, uh, applicants qualifications based on social media profiles has become an inevitable reality of personnel selection. However, research suggests that assessments based on personal social media, such as Facebook, raises legal and ethical issues and offers limited predictive power. Now, let's pretend that you found uh, this article and you want to uh, express this information that I just read. Uh, let's see uh, an attempt from one student who uh, tried to paraphrase uh, this part and I want you to participate, uh, vote, whether you think the student paraphrased uh, the original text sufficiently or not. What does the student say? The student says, cyber vetting, which refers to hiring managers' attempts to assess applicants' qualifications based on social media profiles, is an inevitable reality. But research suggests that social media-based assessments raise legal and ethical issues and provide limited predictive power. The citation here uh, um, in parentheses is correct according to the APA format. The question is, is this sufficiently different from the original to be paraphrase, to count as paraphrase? Uh, now you're voting, I see that 29% uh, say, or more, uh, are saying, okay, 30% think it is sufficiently paraphrased and uh, most of you think, no, it needs to be rewritten uh, in the student's own words. Okay, and in fact, you are most of you are right. Uh, it is not sufficiently paraphrased. Um, sorry, I'm just okay. Uh, it is not sufficiently paraphrased. Uh, what happened here is the student basically just uh, used the exact uh, uh, words with a little bit, a few minor uh, changes. Okay, we're going to look at another example and vote to see if it's sufficiently paraphrased or not. This student number two says, Rulin and Levashina state that engaging in cyber vetting or assessing applicants' qualification through social media networks has become an unavoidable truth of employee selection, but studies propose that evaluations based on private social networks, including Facebook, solicit lawful and moral issues and provide restricted prognostic capability. Now, please vote. Do you think this is sufficiently paraphrased or not? All right, does more people want to vote? Okay, so I see 77% of you, uh, or 75, say yes, this is sufficiently paraphrased, uh, whereas 25 say that uh, it is not sufficiently paraphrased. And in fact, in reality, I'm sorry to disappoint the 75%, but this is uh, not sufficient paraphrasing. What the student did here is just use a thesaurus to use synonyms. So instead of, um, for example, the last sentence, instead of saying raises legal and ethical issues, he says, uh, or she, solicit lawful and moral issues and provide, okay, so uh, it's the exact same sentence structure. Uh, most of the words are identical with a minor changing of just using a synonym. So instead of, um, uh let's see another uh, attempt to just use a synonym oh instead of saying um uh, has become an inevitable reality of personal selection the student says has become an unavoidable truth of employee selection so basically it's just exactly the same sentence with synonyms that is not considered 
sufficient paraphrase. Uh, we're going to do one more exercise to see if the paraphrase is sufficient. Although hiring managers often evaluate the social media profiles of job applicants, this practice likely does not offer any benefits to companies and might even violate legal and ethical standards. What do you think? Is this sufficient to paraphrase or not? Please vote. Okay, does anyone else want to vote? Okay, so 93% now say yes, it's sufficiently paraphrased. Maybe two people are saying no. Um, and yeah, the majority is right in this case. This is in fact uh, a good paraphrase. It's giving me all the information but not using the same sentence structure, not using the same words. It's explaining what the paragraph is saying. Okay, that you're taking information from someone else and that is summarizing. Summarizing means uh, to provide a, a, a small concise statement of another person's thoughts or ideas in your own words. But it's different from paraphrasing because it's you're not just paraphrasing one statement or one idea or one paragraph. You might be uh, summarizing a whole uh, article or a whole book, for example. Um, so the index citation, uh, that format, as you can see here, it's Freud 1930, uh, is exact. It's the same as paraphrasing. Um, and um, the way uh, you summarize, you're just summarizing uh, here, this is an attempt to summarize Freud's uh, book, uh, published in 1930, um, and it's a summarization of the main ideas of the entire book in a few sentences. Um, here, the student wrote, Freud, 1930, argued that civilization both protects humans from discontent and is a primary source of human suffering. This text did not appear in the book or in a translation of the book. It's just a kind of a, a putting together uh, the main ideas that were mentioned by Freud. Now, moving on to the fourth situation where you must cite your source. And this is when you use information that is not common knowledge. Uh, you're using facts that are not common knowledge. Uh, for example, okay, if, if you want to say um, uh, that there are, I mean, okay, are you saying there are 50 states in the U.S. in your paper, for some reason you need to mention this fact, this is common knowledge fact, you don't need to cite any source that tells me that there are 50 states in the United States. However, uh, let's say you want to tell me that in 2019 there were 17.4 million veterans in the United States, that is not common knowledge. Uh, that is a fact. It has statistics and you need to give me where you found it here. It was taken from U.S. Census Bureau, uh, which uh, is a credible source, like Miranda explained. And the year it, the statistics was published, 2020. So let's... Um, uh, look at uh, a kind of a summary of how the in-text citation looks like and mention a very important uh, aspect of in-text citation which is uh, whether you're citing a, a source that was written by one person, two people, or three or more people because that will determine how the format is going to look like in the in-text citation. So what you have here uh, in the middle column that is the narrative format. That's when the name of the author or authors appears in the um, signal phrase. And in the uh, column on the right, example two, you have the parenthetical format. Uh, the choice between these two is free choice. Uh, now we are going to move on and talk about how it looks like depending on the number of authors. Uh, 
if the source was uh, uh, written by just one author, uh, you simply write the author's last name and the year. Uh, and then if you have um, two authors uh, for the same source, uh, you would list, you need to list both last names in the uh, parenthetical format on the right, uh, you use the ampersand instead of parentheses. But if you were using uh, the author's name in a signal phrase in, in the sentence, so for example, if you were saying Wegener and Perry claimed that, you use the word and because it's just a word in your sentence. Now moving on to three or more authors, um, then what you do is you mention the first author's name, that is the first author that appears as the author on the source, uh, and you use the words et al dot before you give me the year. Uh, the words et al means uh, uh, and others, and alia in Latin, and it means uh, and others. Sometimes you have sources that have five or ten or even a hundred uh, authors. So this way, when you're when I'm reading your uh, paper, I don't need to read three uh, pages of author names. You just write the first one, et al outside parentheses or inside the parentheses, and uh, you mention uh, who are the alia, who are the others in the reference uh, page list, which we will talk about. Uh, in a in a in a few seconds. Uh, now, this covers the basics of in-text citation. Uh, but if you have more questions, uh, we strongly recommend uh, to use the uh, OWL, the Online Writing Lab of Purdue University. Uh, they have an APA guide, and they have. Um, uh, every in, on the menu on the left, uh, they give you the different situations that you might want to uh, cite. Uh, so you see here the last two are in-text citations, the basics, and then in-text citation author authors that's showing you uh, how it looks like when you have one author or more. And they have a list of other uh, situations that are specific, you might specifically be looking for. Uh, you have the link to this website on your handout. Uh, 